This story is called The Haunted Birthday Party. Samuel died on the 26th of November 2003 from a terrible accident and only three years has passed since his death. But this isn't about Samuel, it's about his little sister Alice who today is having her sixth birthday party. What's crazy for Alice is her brother Samuel died the day of his birthday three years ago. But as her first friend arrives, her stomach drops as she looks out and sees a single red balloon on the letterbox. You see, red was Samuel's favourite colour and the house was full of red balloons on his birthday. But when they found him strangled to death by the string of the balloon on the very morning of his birthday, they swore to never have a red balloon in the house again. But as a new guest would arrive, so did a red balloon. Her friends were so oblivious to this, they just kept chasing the red balloons around the house. But six of Alice's friends died that day, all strangled to death by the string on a red balloon. The house has now been vacant for 10 years, but the local kids say they still see a red balloon in the windows. This is the scary game of Bloody Mary. According to the legend, you have to stand in front of your bathroom mirror and say Bloody Mary three times in a row. The story says this will summon her ghost. If you see her ghostly face in the mirror, you can have one of the following consequences. Your eyes could be ripped out and your face could be horribly scarred. You could be found dead with claw marks all over your face and body. You could disappear mysteriously from your bathroom and end up trapped in the mirror with the ghost for eternity. Here's a terrifying true ghost story. Two sisters were staying at a very old historic hotel in the middle of nowhere in Montana. The hotel had been around since the 1800s. It was one of the sisters' favorite hotels and they've been multiple times. However, the other sister couldn't sleep because all she heard was someone walking around upstairs on hardwood floors, pacing around the room. In the morning, I asked my sister how she could have slept through it, and she told me that above, it used to be a ballroom where people used to dance, but now it was carpeted and empty. There was no hardwood floors. I asked the hotel staff, and then that's when they confirmed that there was nobody up there. And if there was, I wouldn't have heard high heels on hardwood floors. Scary things that you should never ask Siri, part one. Up first is Siri, are you trying to kill me? Siri will then reply with, Sorry, then your first name, I don't really know. This is pretty creepy, especially because Siri is a full-blown AI. Next is Siri, do you watch me sleep? Siri will either reply with an instant no, or she will say, I know you don't like when I do, so I don't. Now, if that doesn't give you chills, then I don't know what will. Finally, and this is definitely the most scariest one of all, ask Siri where to hide a dead body. She will then reply with in the swamps, the dumps, a metal factory, mines and reservoirs, and dumpsters behind buildings. This is super scary, and it's just creepy that Siri knows where to hide dead bodies. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the early 1970s, a college student decided to hitchhike his way home after class. A car pulls up, a man offers him a ride, and he climbs in. As soon as the car started moving, the student felt totally uneasy, like something was wrong but he couldn't quite place it. Without saying anything, he waited till the next time they slowed down and he flung the door open and ran away. Two years later, he's flicking through TV channels when he comes across this special interview with a death row inmate, and it's just the audio recording, so he hears the interviewer ask the inmate, why did you remove all the door handles inside of your car? The man just goes, well, the first time I tried to kill someone, I picked up a college hitchhiker who got smart at some point and jumped out of my car. So, lesson learned, remove all the door handles. 
When they showed his picture, the student knew immediately that he was supposed to be the first victim of John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the killer clown who had killed over 30 men and boys in his clown room and stuffed them into his basement. This is the dark mirror, and it's one of the most haunted items in the world. The original owner of this mirror purchased it at a psychic fair, but immediately claimed that there was something very evil about it. So she donated it to a traveling museum for the paranormal. This museum has a whole bunch of different paranormal objects, but the dark mirror is by far the most horrifying. The museum actually has to keep the mirror covered and tell people that if they're going to look into it, they have to do so at their own risk. Because the people who are brave enough almost always regret it. The people who have looked into the mirror claim to feel an immediate sense of doom and depression. But for others, it was far more horrifying. Some claim to see their own facial expressions warp and twist and others would look into it and see their own dead body. The people who hold the mirror claim to feel a strange sense of electricity. And every night, the museum workers cover up the mirror. Every morning, they find it mysteriously uncovered. These are the strangest things that have ever been caught on camera. This video shows what appears to be a dark humanoid type creature crawling towards a bunch of boys playing soccer. Once the kids see it, they immediately run away in terror. Nobody knows for sure what this animal was, but many people claim that it was the South American mythical beast known as the Pombero. This next video was taken at the funeral of a 7 year old girl. It shows one of the balloons that was next to her coffin somehow floating directly to her crying mother in the audience. Many people believe that this was the girl trying to comfort her mother from the grave. This is the creepy story of Jeff the Killer. Jeff the Killer was once a normal boy named Jeff and he had just moved to a new town with his family. One night, three teenagers attacked him at an outdoor party and his face got severely burned. But he was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. A couple days later when he got his bandages off, his face was horribly deformed. He loved it, he said. It was perfect for his brand new personality. Jeff decided that he loved his face so much that he didn't want to stop looking at it. He didn't even want to blink so he burned his eyelids off. And he never wanted to stop smiling so he gave himself a permanent smile. That same night, Jeff murdered his family. But now he runs around killing little children with a knife. 